we are trying our level best ke isko standardize moment ke upar jo hai we'll be able to bring it up but, but the so, thing is you guys must be glad to know ki pure pure uk mein jo exams recognize hote hain na fcps ko unhone top level rakha hai ki to iska standard ek maintain hua hai jiski wajah se wo abhi bhi uk mein recognize hota hai fcps exam is a fair and honest exam bob that's a great news that's look uh, where <laughs> the उसमें नाम रखा हुआ है तो एग्जाम में सीपीएस इज रिकॉग्नाइज्ड इट इज रिकॉग्नाइज्ड दैट्स ग्रेट इवन गुड न्यूज़ फॉर फॉर ऑल द दोस रेजिडेंट हु आर पेयरिंग एफ सी पी एस पार्ट टू सो दे विल गोइंग टू हैव सम वैल्यू ओवर इन यू के वेन यू कम टू इंग्लैंड यू डोंट हैव टू डू द एफ आर सी एस एनी मोर देन यू कैन जस्ट स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड गो टू द एफ आर सी एस पार्ट टू इफ यू वांट टू लाइक दैट्स अ ग्रेट न्यूज़ दैट्स अ ग्रेट न्यूज़ थैंक यू सो टॉल मेन आल्सो सॉरी काउंट मी इन आल्सो हमने शोल्डर पलो जो है वो स्टार्ट कर दिए वो लिमा वाले को फंड कर रहे हैं रिमेंबरिंग दैट डिड डिड अलीसियो रिस्पोंड टू यू सुफियान सर ही गिव मी हिज नंबर इज आई थिंक नंबर इन ऑस्ट्रेलिया आई डिड नॉट कांटेक्ट हिम बिकॉज़ वहां के वीकेंड है आपको पता है इट वाज फ्राइडे नो आई थॉट कि मंडे मॉर्निंग से बात करें तो ज्यादा बेहतर है ना वो वो ठीक है मैं मैं भी उसको उसको मैसेज भेज दिया है लेकिन उसका जवाब आया था कि आई टॉक टू यू ऑन मंडे तो फिर मैंने कहा ठीक है अब तंग उसको नहीं करना चाहिए ऑब्वियसली मैं मैंने भी एक सोच सोचा कि बेटर के उसको मंडे मॉर्निंग ही उसको जो है वो टैप किया जाए सो लेट्स होप कि व्हाट एवर व्हाट एवर वी आर ट्राइंग टू प्लान इन अप्रैल गोल बिकम द सक्सेस वे ये वो कजिन डोंट फॉरगेट यू हैव टू टेल मी व्हाट यू वांट दैट पर्सन टू कल वो मुझे शायद भाई भी कह रहे थे कि उस बंदे की डिटेल्स है तुम नर्स लेके आ रहे हो मैंने कहा मैं नर्स बना लेके आ रहा हूं बंदे नहीं लेके आ रहे किसी को कन्विंस नहीं कर सकते हम लेकिन ये कि ही इज आवर क्लिनिकल ट्यूटर सो वो नर्सिंग डिपार्टमेंट के लिए उसको मैं कहा तो उसने कहा मैं तो जरूर जाऊंगा पाकिस्तान को टार्डस हो गया है मैं उसको ये नहीं बताया कि टार्डस से इतने चॉइस लिए गया था कि हमने उसको घुमाया फिराया था तुम तुम तो जो है पाकिस्तान में जाओगे इतना ना मेरे पास था मैंने कहा किसी और के तुम्हें घुमाया फिराया लेकिन यस ही ही सेड ही विल गो आई विल आई विल सेंड द डिटेल्स टू शायद भाई पूछ रहे थे उसके बारे में तो अभी फ्यू मिनट्स आई एम जस्ट गोइंग टू गो एंड एंड बी बैक इन 2 सेकंड्स आई विल कीप दिस ओपन सो वी कैन एंड एंड जॉइन इन यू कैन स्टार्ट व्हेन यू स्टार्ट इन बट आई विल बी जॉइनिंग इन इन बिटवीन आई हैव गॉट अ कपल ऑफ थिंग्स टू डू आई एम कल भी जब वो बड़ा रहे थे हमारे मेहमान घर पे पहुंच गए तो उनको भी तकलीफ हो रही थी कि बार बार उन्हें किधर जा रहे हैं बट आई विल जॉइन यू जस्ट जस्ट वेट फॉर अ कपल ऑफ मिनट्स शहबाज इज जॉइनिंग ओनली सो वी आर श्योर वी आर वाचिंग द मैच कपल ऑफ मिनट्स यार बट बट डोंट डोंट गो एंड लीव आई एम लेफ्ट इन ओपन सो पीपल कैन जॉइन यार सो देयर इज समबडी एल्स सो आई मस्ट जॉइन नाउ एग्जैक्टली कादर में स्कोर क्या है मैं तो देखा ही नहीं है अभी व्हाट्स द स्कोर 25 पे 0 है और 3 ओवर हो चुके हैं 191 का टारगेट है 119 गोइंग गुड कराची अच्छा जा रहा है अभी समझ नहीं गया पता है इसमें क्या नजर आ रहा है मेरे को सब नॉर्मल लग रहा है इसका फ्रैक्चर के वाटसन को आउट कर दें बस मैच जीत जाएंगे पढ़ने लो ठीक है
the get going in gradually uh, i think we have got 1 2 3 4 four participants so far can we for 10 minutes sir so start kar le fir start kar le what do people say yes sir start kar le ji ji start kar le log aate rahenge fir chale theek hai fine so bismillah uh, rahman rahim um, good evening everyone uh, assalam alaikum i think uh, you all almost uh, everyone knows me and dr kazim we uh, will be uh, taking you through uh some sections of uh, uh, the knee joint and uh, uh, we'll tell you what actually uh, are the uh, some uh, tips and tricks to actually pick up uh, complex injuries around the knee joint that you will be coming across in your uh, short case and long case inshallah most most likely coming coming next week or a week after that um uh, to to begin with a with a with a question uh, what are the problems that you actually uh, uh, have see आप लोगों की प्रॉब्लम्स क्या हैं नी के अंदर जो कि आपको क्लिनिकल शॉर्ट केस या लॉन्ग केस के अंदर हर्डल्स क्या हैं प्रॉब्लम्स क्या हैं शॉर्टकमिंग्स क्या हैं इन अंडरस्टैंडिंग सो दैट इट बिकम्स इजी फॉर अस टू एक्चुअली गाइड यू टू एक्चुअली रेदर देन गोइंग थ्रू अ सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर्स जो कि ऑब्वियसली इस वक्त जो है वो एफ सी पार्ट टू की कैंडिडेट की नॉलेज जो है वो कंसल्टेंट से कई ज्यादा होती है जब वो एग्जाम दे रहा होता है तो आई एम श्योर यू यू पीपल जस्ट बी नोइंग फॉर लॉन अस in and this but what are the shortcomings aap bari bari bata dein ki bhai aap logo ko kya cheez samajh mein nahi aa rahi so that we can guide you through that problem sir basically uh, the diagnosis may to reach our diagnosis on the basis of examination kyunki a uh, few moments mein aisa hota hai ki damaged hota hai uh, um PCL और हमें जो है वो ड्रॉ टेस्ट पॉजिटिव आ रहा होता है तो वी फील के इट्स एक्चुअली ए सी एल लेकिन वो ए सी एल तो वॉट आर दॉइंट दैट वी हैव टू सी के टू एक्चुअली नो दैट इट्स पी सी एल एंड नॉट ए सी एल ठीक है फाइन फाइन एनी अदर प्रॉब्लम फर्स्ट पॉइंट जो वी विल बी हाईलाइटिंग इज हाउ टू डायग्नोज मल्टी लेग सॉर्ट ऑफ ठीक है और कोई प्रॉब्लम एनीवन एल्स और कोई इश्यू जो कि आपको नी जॉइंट के अंदर हर्डल होता है स्टेप्स स्टेप ऑफ एसीएल आर्थोस्कोपिक एसीएल रिकंस्ट्रक्शंस वो स्टेप जो वन बाय स्टेप होते हैं वो वी एग्जैक्टली द स्टेप एग्जैक्टली ठीक है फाइन फाइन सो यू सर्जिकल टेक्निक द सेकंड प्रॉब्लम इज सर्जिकल टेक्निक और इसके अलावा कोई What are the problems? Some cases of uh, associated injuries like multi-ligamentous injuries like MCL no. and ACL. So if Fine. you got LC, MCL no. and ACL, then what is the algorithm for that? Multi-lig, multi-lig situation. Okay. Is there any other thing? Anyone else? ठीक है चले आई थिंक लेट्स बिगिन जो शॉर्ट केस और लॉन्ग केस का डिफ्रेंसिएशन uh, पॉइंट क्या होता है मतलब व्हाट इज हाउ दे वैल्यूएट यू आपको कैसे बता, पता लगता है कि आपका शॉर्ट केस पास है या आपको कैसे पता लगता है आपका लॉन्ग केस पास है उसके कुछ कंपोनेंट्स होते हैं दे आर सम कॉम्पोनेट्स ऑफ ऑफिंग शॉर्ट वेदर इट्स वेदर इट्स एनीथिंग एल्स ठीक है फर्स्ट चीज जो होती है आपको शॉर्ट केस के अंदर इट्स अ डायग्नोसिस बेस्ड एग्जाम अ लॉन्ग सर आपको पूरा बिल्ड करना पड़ता है एक हिस्ट्री के ऊपर से लेकर एंड यू हैव टू रीच अप टू लुक कंक्लूजन शॉर्ट केसेस यूजली स्पॉट डायग्नोसिस के रखे जाते हैं जो कि आपके आइडेंटिफाइबल केसेस होते हैं जिसमें आप जो है वो आप पकड़ सकते हैं कि भाई इसमें प्रॉब्लम क्या है कमिंग स्पेसिफिकली टू द नी ज्वाइंट नी ज्वाइंट एक ऐसा एक नी प्रॉब्लम या नी इंजरीज ऐसी प्रॉब्लम रखी जाती है बिकॉज इट्स अ कंसील्ड सॉर्ट ऑफ अ ज्वाइंट अगर कोई डिफॉर्मिटी आपको बोन के अंदर नजर आ रही है तो वो आप फॉरन पकड़ लेंगे मगर ज्वाइंट की नहीं रखते यू एक्चुअली ट्राई टू कीप इट इन लॉन्ग केस शॉर्ट ऑफ सीनारियो जिसके अंदर आपको जो है वो आपके मनूवर जो है वो एक्सटेंसिव मनूवर जो है वो आपको करने पड़ते हैं इन ऑर्डर टू कम अपन ठीक है सो कुछ प्रॉब्लम हमने उन्हें आइडेंटिफाई की हर्डल्स वी हैव एक्चुअली लुक्ड इन टू अपॉन अपॉन इट 
I think Dr. Pradeep has got a brief presentation on the, the knee joint. Uh, which is which is actually opened up on the screen. I think Dr. Kazim uh, will actually tell you okay, what are what are the key components that you actually have to look for when going towards your short case. Aapko just be very ye wo basic anatomy wali cheez nahi hai ke ACL ki thickness itni hoti hai, uski jo hai wo direction jo hai wo kaun se uski kis taraf jata hai, and what are the things. But clinical basis ke upar aapko jo cheezein jo important hai, wo clinical usko jo hai wo initially start karte hai, and then we'll start to move around. The, the the ACL something about the PC and posterior lateral border the medial side and then we'll come to the multi ligamentous sort of, sort of situation ke aapko exam ke base ke hisab se aapko multi ligamentous situation ke andar what are they trying to ask you or aapke components aapki jo hoti kis component ke upar aapko rakhna hota hai history and examination aapka main component hota hai investigation ke kuch components hote hain and surgical techniques jo hoti hain uska component यूजुअली उस वक्त तक आता है कि आप या तो पास हो चुके होते हैं या पास होने के किसी भी आई मीन सिचुएशन को समझने के लिए दे एक्चुअली जंप इनटू रीसेंट एडवांसेस एग्जाम में रीसेंट एडवांसेस से बात होती है तो दो रीजन होती हैं या तो आप बहुत बुरे तरीके से फेल हो चुके हैं और एग्जामिनर अपना टाइम पास कर रहा है या फिर ट्राइंग टू मेक टू गो आप इन टू एन डिस्टिंगटिव कलर यानी आप सारे कॉम्पिटेंट पास कर चुके हैं अब आपसे की बात हो रही है सो आई थिंक डॉक्टर काजिम इसको थोड़ा सा इफ यू अगर वो अगर एनेटमी वगैरह थोड़ा सा आप लेके चले तो बिल्कुल की पॉइंट जो है वो फिर हम डिस्कस हो जाए so बिस्मिल्लाह रहमान रहीम सो यू ऑल कैन सी माई जस्ट प्रेजेंटेशन राइट साहब आपके पास बंदे जो लेक्चर देख रहे हैं मेरा तो इतने जमा भी नहीं करते यू मस्ट बी एन इम्पोर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट इज मोर इंटरेस्टिंग राइट द स्पोर्ट्स इंजरी इज ऑलवेज मोर इंटरेस्टिंग सर वी लाइक काजिम भाई वेरी मच सो so guys uh, basically as dr sufyan what i have told you is the same for the exam short case long case is totally different ball game short case what you have to do you have to be very concise you have to be very specific you should know what you are looking and what you want to get out of it and then the end of the day diagnosis and then you go with an uh, relevant uh, uh, investigation and also, and also diagnosis on the investigation and on the maybe you can just say what the treatment is over there and that's it so knee is one of the one of the important uh, component of the exam and most of most i think so 100% of the patient of the candidate will be going to come across with some pathology of the knee in case of uh, like uh, to say oski that may be uh, that long case that may be the short case so you should be very much clear in your mind in your history examination okay what you want to see and what you are looking into and what you want to do out out of it so i have a very uh, extensive uh, uh, this uh, presentation in which every aspect is been covered so i will not going to tell you each and every uh, slide on it but i have put it over there so that we can have uh, some idea so we can have a very quick review on every slide okay what is all about now the knee so this is the basic model of the knee in which that the comprises of every aspect the knee uh, consist of so we are now talking about uh, more inside the intra articular uh, a level of the femoral tibial component uh, that will be um, acl intra articular it is acl and pcl and extra articular it is mcl or lcl or uh, fibulopatellar ligament or plc component totally separated so these all consist inside the knee that we all have the pathology of course we should have the pathology of the patella is totally it's uh, pathophysiology is separated so we are not going to discuss uh, this patella component for uh, for uh, today so the meniscus we all know what the meniscus is we have got two meniscus inside the knee joint uh, medial meniscus and the lateral meniscus then the meniscus has the three uh, components posterior body and anterior 
so this how it came come, come across what does it mean it's all about 19th previously it was the concept it has to be removed it was a remnant component of the tissue inside the knee joint so if it is tear remove it if still you have a doubt remove it so after that with the with the passage of time they have find the importance of this uh, meniscus and now it is uh, being uh, advocated so always always uh, reserve your meniscus so this meniscus when it was compared with the human uh, and the mammalian though both have this component of medial and lateral meniscus so what happened if you remove the meniscus so it have going to cause a decrease in the contact area what does the meniscus do it equally distribute the weight over the uh, knee joint and uh, when when the meniscus contact area when it is is not there the single component single single area of the femur to tibia increases to 200% uh, level there will be so so this all the importance of the meniscus and this meniscus it's present it's present at the 10 to 8 to 10 week of gestation and it is being formed at the intermediate layer of the meniscal tissue so these are the uh, whole of the meniscus the medial and lateral meniscus it the meniscus itself is being ad adherent to the bone by its ligament so meniscus as its own ligament so ligament of hamprey uh, ligament of uh, wrist bar so what are these ligament function is to hold the meniscus on the bone so these are the uh, meniscal ligaments insertional uh, ligament anterior inter insertional ligament meniscal femoral uh, and the deep meniscal femoral ligament so if you see these are the uh, role of this meniscus ligament so meniscus it has its own uh, ligaments uh, for holding on the bone so these ligament it has its secondary function also so if you see meniscal femoral ligament the second secondary refer to posterior drop and deep meniscal uh, uh, meniscal ligament secondary refer to valgus is 90 degree so it has its own importance so of course it, they were not going to go into the deep so you will be all being uh, be fcps part 2 and if you are planning for frcs one so these are the major component of uh, this exam and and they uh, where we should know about its importance also so we are not uh, well i'm going to skip this uh, uh, this slide so it is mostly component uh, consists of uh, water we all know in the dry stage it is collagen and these are the fibers that is present on the um, there the two layer fibers that is superficial and the deep the superficial uh, uh, layer fibers and the deep layer uh, fibers uh, causes the meniscus to be uphold in a string fashion so and tear uh, dictate the uh, fiber that is being torn so we all know this is a stratified fibrocartilaginous tissue and it consists of the type 1 type 2 type 3 and again this is not so important that's where uh, maybe uh, more important for your mcq which you have given and mashallah you have done we all have done great the on this uh, we all know there's a three zone white zone red white and red zone so what to do in which cases we all know the central avascular area if there is any torn it can be removed it can be uh, trim off the mm, red white and red zone it need to be reconstructed or repaired sorry so why the meniscus never uh, most of the time it uh, never heal because of the synovial fluid synovial fluid doesn't allow the anything inside the joint to heal up same with the acl same with the pcl same with the meniscus so you have to decrease the gap between the meniscus it has to be hold together so the healing process can happen so that the repair or different repair technique is present outside in inside out all inside technique so these what is be required to repair the meniscus reason meniscus doesn't repair because of the 
uh, synovial fluid. So you all about this, it have the nerve, uh, nerve bundles and it, it has a Golgi type three ending perimeniscal capsular tissue. So there is a meniscal, uh, that's why when the locking, there's a pain. Patient with the uh, meniscal, uh, whenever there is a meniscal tear, there is a pain. So these are all of the nerve finding. So if you see inside the, uh, this knee joint, so this picture, the black zone, which shows about the uh, blood supply of the meniscus and this uh, central zone is avascular and the peripheral zone is avascular. So we all know the meniscus, medial and lateral meniscus translate posterior on tibia plateau due to de deflection and the lateral meniscus trans translate greater than as compared to the medial meniscus. Why? The medial meniscus is adherent to the uh, to the capsule of this adherence of this uh, of this capsule so that what happened it doesn't uh, 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 there is a decreased translation it is a uh, uh, bonding is tight between the capsule and the meniscus later meniscus because of the of the uh, popliteus hiatus and the uh, ligament uh, popliteus tendon it is uh, not adherent to the capsule. So it's more of the tear is mostly basically caused with the medial meniscus as compared to the lateral meniscus and the lateral meniscus more translate posteriorly. So this is how the translation happened. So though it's not so important. So we go uh, more further. So meniscus motion through knee flexion, the meniscus translate outward and posteriorly and lateral meniscus uh, causes more as compared to the medial meniscus. And the meniscus has a function in the joint stability also. That's also very important. The posterior horn of the medial meniscus also resists the anterior translation. So that's important. If you do a meniscectomy, so that what happened, you go into addition given uh, the uh, ACL a work to do and then if there is a deficient knee with the meniscectomy so there is a more uh, abnormally the anterior translation positive shift uh, pivot shift is more uh, in, in those knees and it is more pro prone to the arthritis so if you see in this diagram it's very well uh, show you the loading how it has been distributed equally and this if you see in this diagram if there's a meniscus, if the whole of the load is from the whole of the knee joint, if without the meniscus, the load goes to one point and this causes to 200 increased contact stress without the meniscus. So that's very important about the meniscus, why the meniscus should be there. That's maybe not relevant to your long case and short case, but maybe sometime in the long case, if you uh, plan, if you say I'm going to repair it, so that may be uh, uh, there. Uh, one of the uh, discussion of how, why you need a repair, why, why don't we remove it? So these are all the importance of the meniscus and the tensile strain of the meniscus is not as much as compared to the intercrucial ligament and the posterior crucial ligament. So these were about the meniscus. Meniscus is being, how the meniscus is being repaired anything which we put from outside to inside the joint to repair it it is known as the outside in technique if i put something from inside to the meniscus that goes out so that repairable can be done it is known as an inside out if i do anything inside the meniscus because of the new uh, forge of now uh, the minister repair uh, implants are available, so that's a fourth generation uh, technique that the different companies that that relies with and the uh, municipal clinch or uh, all those. That's all inside technique. We don't need to go out of the knee joint or come from outside to inside of the knee joint to repair the meniscal area. So the for the meniscus. Meniscus, we always have to advocate to repair the meniscus. Again, there is an indication of the menis uh, meniscus repair. If uh, it is most of the time need to be repaired, if patient coming with, uh, uh, with the knee injury for uh, more time that causes 
or, or the this uh, tissue to be more flabby tissue quality is not good and that's for arthroscopically that you always do it so that that time uh, that's very hard to repair or the repair will never going to heal that's where you're going to have a partial meniscectomy so always an exam meniscal tear you have to repair it and uh, there's a other uh, beside that is uh, it's, uh, it will not going to be more uh, for exam purpose about the ramp repair and uh, about the root repair and this and that that's just a basic concept about it anterior crucial ligament rupture one of the uh, favorite uh, most of the most of what i would rather say a, a patient presenting will going to have uh, with the, the knee injury have this type of uh, this problem with the intercrucial ligament tear. So for exam purpose, your history is very much important. So how it landed on the knee, what is the rotation while it landed on the knee, what was the uh, swelling, what, when it happened. So what is a sign and symptom? If the knee pain or the sim sign will be giving away or symptom may be a giving away of the knee joint. Abna ham exam may saval puchengi apne your patient ko ki apka kutna nikal jata hai or patient kahega ji nikal jata hai. That's a very pathognomic question to be asked for the patient with ACL here. If you're not going to ask this question, that means you are not aware of what this uh, ACL cause or what the function of the ACL is. Swelling also related, there is also 40 to 50% chances of meniscus tear and the ACL, uh, and the ACL uh, tear. So that's very important. You need to uh, look for the ligaments in, of course, with the help of a Mac Marys that we you do when you internally rotate the knee joint is for the lateral meniscus when you externally rotate the knee joint uh, the the tibia it is for the medial meniscus and the, of course lachman test the knee is uh, semi flex at 20 30 degree with the slow motion i mean this other slow motion see be very gentle in your exam you are dealing with a true patient and you have to show your sympathy, your gentleness, and you have to be more, uh, more looking like an orthopedic surgeon. It should be should not be like this and that. Just hold your humor and tibia, just with that motion, very gentle motion, you are going to find the knee lachman is positive. It doesn't need to do this, that, this. If you're going to do this, I mean, the examiner will, at the same time, will do this. First, the patient is going to have the pain and that will going to fail you. And of course, see on the patient face, that's the most important in your exam. Don't give pain to your patient. If patient scream or shout or show their grievance because of the pain, that will going to give a big major negative marking. Just hold the knee joint. I will going to hold the knee joint of uh, the femur with the help of my left and the tibia very near to the joint and I'm going to do like this holding the femur like that or tibia just very slowly Lachman test then when when you did a Lachman test now the second thing for the ACL is just we want to do the uh, that's uh, the anterior draw test anterior draw test the knee joint will be on the neutral position, flex to 90 degree. You have to ask a patient, will he allow you to sit on his feet or not? Be gentle again. Show, uh, show that, uh, show uh, your uh, level of uh, relation, good relation with the patient. The patient, that, that patient is going to make you pass and that patient is going to make you fail. Sitting on the patient uh, a foot and just relax the patient. It doesn't mean you go inside and just start just doing this. You put your hand behind the knee joint, feel the hamstring. If the hamstring is taut, ask the patient to relax. You tell them you will not going to hurt them. 
make sure your hamstring is relieved, relax. Once you're doing that, just a gentle push. It's not going to be like that. Gentle push will going to give you the whole of the importance. Then you will going to do a slocum test. Slocum test is for the uh, when you rotate it for interlateral and intermedial corners. That what you uh, will going to uh, uh, do uh, for the ACL. That's very important. So we're going to go further. Uh, that we're going to for the PCL and PCA, PLC corner. ACL, if it is strong, then the MCL, we know what the MCL does. MCL for this, we need to do a valgus stress test in 30 degree, in zero degree. That's important for you. You perform it very gently. Your hand, that shows how much you are doing in the, uh, you are doing on your regular patient. It should not be like that. Your hand should stabilize the femur and then your tibia just slowly. If you want to do and uh, for the MCL, my hand goes opposite. My right hand goes up, my left hand goes down. For if I want to do for the EP, uh, LCL, my left hand goes up, my right hand goes up. Hand motion slowly, zero degree, 30 degree, that's very important for you to give you the correct information. Okay, what, uh, how you are doing? Are you aware of the test? Have you done it before? It's the first time you are doing in the exam. We're going to keep you pass and fail. So I want to also to uh, give you some of the ethical part of the exam also that will make going to help you to pass the exam. So uh, lateral collateral ligament, we all know about it. What the ACL function is, and we prevent the anterior translation of the tibia with respect to the femur, prevent anterolateral rotation. So these are the two of the function of the ACL, and this ACL is run at the 45 days gestation. It is present uh, in the human being. So another important question that's what what we all intermediate two bundles, intermediate and posterior lateral bundle. Just just a minute. Sorry. Intermedial bundle, what does it do? Entry stability, taut in flexion. Posterolateral bundle, rotation stability, taut in extension. So, if you see the anatomy of the, uh, this uh, ACL, on the extension, it is straight. As it is go to the flexion, it is uh, being curled around itself. So, it's very important. Okay, what does ACL? It's oblique and it is curled on flagellant. So anterior, but intermedial bundle has its own function. Posterior bundle has its own function. For the 100% uh, functional outcome, the both bundle need to be restored. If in the sport person, there's nothing like partial tear conservative management. We're going to see what does the partial tear will going to have a negative impact upon the uh, knee joint uh, stability. Very important slide. Uh, double mandar anatomy extension. What is happening? Straightening, and it's, as it go flex, it is curl. It rotate on its own. It is curled around. So again, if you see intermediate and posterior lateral, now we're going to have the concept of the anatomical landmark of the uh, ACL insertion that we're going to talk about it later on. So what should be our goal? To restore normal knee kinematic, mm, to have a pain-free stable to provide an expedient return to previous level of function. So what? why we are doing an ACL, mm, normal kinematic we require, free stable knee knee has to be stable the unstable knee will going to further deteriorate the articular surfaces it's going to cause an early arthritis 10 to a acl deficient knee we're going to have a 10 to 15 percent earlier or, or osteoarthritis of the knee joint timing of the acl earlier the better don't wait for it 
but it's very important uh, just uh, what what we want to achieve full range of motion and we have to avoid the arthrofibrosis at any cost then the knee should be 100% uh, restored functional outcomes with there so again there's a two technique that has been done is transtibial or transportal transtibial it was being done before now it is recommendation to have a transportal why the trans uh, portal has been recommended because we need an anatomical place is here mm -hmm. if you do a trans tibial so the the on the on the uh, on the guide wire that you place for the tibia it will going to go into the femur so for the femoral side it will normal going to be an anatomical place there are the techniques which we evolve through the trans tibial the anatomical placement can be done but of course it, it's not so commonly or easily need it's a more steeper curve so it's very important for the trans tibial technique it is non anatomical quick reproducible fibrotomy terminal without offset guide through the tibial tunnel so what happening in trans tibial we are putting uh, through the tibial jig we are putting uh, this guide wire and is go through through to the tibia to the femur so a non anatomical placement of the femoral tunnel that happen that will going to cause an early failure of the acl because the vertically placed tibia can resist the anterior posterior uh, uh, forces but rotation forces it can't re resist so it will always prone to a failure so the acl is oblique and that's how the ac should be be placed for to regain or to resist the anterior posterior and also the rotation uh, of the knee joint so now arthroscopic uh, reconstruction so that's what uh, we are doing uh, nowadays it is a uh, very important to have an anatomical place of the femoral and the tibial if you there's a concept of double bundle anatomical so this is what the double bundle is you see am this is an accurately placed uh, this uh, tunnels for the femoral and the tibia so this how the uh, expert uh, were used to do pl osteolateral and am this two separate tunnels is been placed for both the am and the pl on the tibia am and pl for the uh, this uh, femur also so what is drawbacks of course two tunnels it's very hard there's always a chance of a blow out the complexity of passing the uh, this uh, this uh, two graft and also uh, there is a very uh, problem that uh, how to fix it and in which position to fix the which bundle one to stay fix in the extension one another fix in the flexion and it has its own complications so expertise is more required for the double bundle so when the research was done it will, it was been seen anatomically placed femoral tunnel they have a equal functional outcome and equal to the double bundle so on this basis now it is being being advocated single bundle anatomical place tibia and the femur going to have you the same functional for did of course it's arthroscopy assisted and if you know your anatomy you can have a face of femoral tunnel anatomically tibial tunnel anatomically so anatomical tibial tunnel placement femoral tunnel the independent of the tibial tunnel and that's what the transportal I mean, to the portal you make a both both of the tunnel so if you see over here that what is show single bundle non anatomical this we are the on the femur the uh, this uh, you has to be uh, for the femoral tunnel uh, for the acl but due to the trans tibial it always goes up so that's not truly pain but if you see if you do in the transportal so where the femoral tunnel should be so coming back i just uh, for those who are having an interest of uh, of this acl what the anatomical mandamin so there is a ridge over here this ridge is posterior to the ridge is am and anterior to the ridge is pl this 
the risk will going to dictate you about the uh, this femoral anatomical tunnel. So this is where your uh, femoral tunnel has uh, should be. So going further, how the and this how you you put a femoral tunnel. You put uh, first of all have a anterolateral uh, transcendent portal and intermedial uh, portals, anterolateral for the camera and the intermedial uh, for the working portal for the shavers for all your uh, this thing. Uh, instrument that has been required, then you have to put your camera uh, toward the femoral tunnel lateral side because it goes like that. That where you see your how you want the placement of your tunnel. You have to make your knee flex 120 degree for the femoral. The offset then has been required just to put an offset, and you have to with the help of a shaver you have to go that landmark the ridge the uh, that that uh, resident bridge that what uh, we call that we have, you have to go there then you have to put a guide wire to the b pin through and through then through and through when you put a b pin then you rim it with 4 mm drill that will going to go through and through uh, to the, the hole of the femoral tunnel then you have to uh, with the help of uh, uh, this uh, you have to measure okay, how much this tunnel was um, approximately it will be 40 38 so me your tunnel is 38 millimeter so minimum of 20 mm of your tendon you need to bring inside your tunnel and rest 20 mm or 18 mm of the of the femoral tunnel you have you have to keep it unrimmed and the width of the tendon, uh, it's average, we keep it eight, or for the revision, we keep it nine. So the eight mm width that I will going to drill till 20 mm, and the rest 18 mm or 20 mm, we're going to keep it just for four mm. And for the rest 20 mm for the uh, this uh, graph that I'm going to do for eight mm. So eight mm will going to go inside. If you see over here, you can appreciate this 8 mm rimming, extra rimming was done, but we're going to keep to make the 20 mm, uh, this graph inside it, uh, that we have to do it for 20 mm. Same for the tibial tunnel, it, it, you have to rim it whole first for with the 4.5 mm, and then the whole two to 8 mm, uh, this for the graph. So, so keep in mind 20 mm, around 15 mm come intra articularly and around 25 to 30 mm goes into the tibia. So 30, 15, uh, 45, around or uh, 20, around uh, 70 mm of the graph length is required. What is, it, what is important uh, for to have the whole of the AC inside the joint. So you have an endo button on the femoral side and then I observe screws uh, on the tibial side for those who are using a hamstring tendons. For those who are using a BTB tendon, because the bone on the femoral and the tibia, in that you can use a titanium screw. So titanium screws for the bone and the biosubers screws for the tendon. So this is how we do it. So hope I am able to somewhat give you an idea okay, what the femoral tunnel is meant for, what is the anatomical uh, uh, landmarks for the femur and for the tibia it is an insertion and it is on the lateral to the anterior, anterior tibial spine that we're going to keep and just drill it for 8 mm. So then come with the PCL we go what is the function of the PCL primary restraint against posterior tibial displacement and regulate screw home mechanism uh, and the proprioception that has been required PCL again. Sorry. Would you like to take a break for, uh, for a time or you want to continue for uh, going to the PCL? I have no, uh, I have no problem as, as you uh, yeah. people want to do it. So yesterday we did the same. Uh, um, it depends on the trainees, but I think it is easier. If you are happy, I think we should finish it and then we can wait for everybody to ask questions at the end. 
because there are few things that uh, Dr. Kazim has actually told you. Uh, if Dr. Kazim wants to take a break, I can uh, show some few. So, Sufyan, continue with it. Yeah. If you can just allow me to share my slides, I think Dr. Kazim, you have to take please. back yours. Please, please. I just go out. Yeah, all you have to do is, is yeah, put yours and you just share it. It will come. Not uh, yes. Now, now i will be able to. Okay, so. Uh, Actually, Dr. Kazim uh, very elaboratively uh, thought about the ACL injuries uh, uh, regarding that. Uh, there are a few things that uh, you need to know when you are actually going through an examination of your, in your short case, whether it's an ACL or an ACL. Uh, few things that you need to, uh, I mean, standardize. One thing, you don't have time for all the tests in this world because for the knee, if you if you read your, your books, uh, you, you will have around 10 tests for ACL, uh, for PCL and for other sort of injury. But in exam scenario, you don't have that much sort of time. So you need to make a logarithm. One test should be done for anterior posterior sort of instability. And the second step, second test, uh, the, and the, for anterior posterior sort of instability, you can perform two tests. One is a Lekman test at zero degree and then at 30 degrees. And another, a rotatory test is, an, is a must thing for to do for your, whenever you are looking for your, even for your ACL injury, because ACL is the structure which actually uh, looks after your anterior translation as well as a rotatory sort of translation. So it gives you an idea that which fiber of the ACL will be torn. And uh, uh, that is that you need to be very, very, I mean, um, uh, quick in that. And you need to understand that these two tests are very of prime importance in under diagnosing uh, your, uh, your thing. Uh, other things that you need to understand that whenever you go through an, a series of investigations, that what type of, what will be your next step? The examiner will definitely ask you a question that when, when, once you're, 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 you're finished with your uh, examination point of view, that what would be the next step? You always start from from the very basic sort of uh, uh, investigation, which is uh, uh, an X-ray of uh, the knee joint, because an X-ray will be able to pick up many findings that uh, your MRI will not be able to pick because of the uh, component of uh, the soft tissue uh, which is uh, present around that structure. Uh, other than that, Dr. Kazim has actually briefly told you that the next question uh, will be that uh, whether would you like to go for a reconstruction or you don't want to go for a reconstruction if you see a, a, a ligament sort of injury. If you see a patient soon after your, 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 uh, your clinical examination, if, if, uh, what do you think? Will you be able to go for a reconstruction in this sort of an x-ray? Well, the answer is no. You need to understand what are the clinical parameters of actually going through an ACL sort of a reconstruction. You need to have a very, very good cartilage which is present around the joint, which is in a preserved sort of a fashion. The meniscal injury can be dealt there and there and uh, then whenever you're actually going inside. But if you see these sort of a big osteochondral defects inside while performing your MRI or this sort of an X-ray, then your answer is um, a straightforward that you will not be going for an ACL sort of reconstruction. Just remember that any case of uh, uh, an ACL sort of reconstruction, if you are actually trying to uh, uh, answer that you will be going for a reconstruction, the answer cannot be always true. If you see this type of an X-ray, that your answer can be some other uh, the structure, the, some other procedures that can, can be done. For example, uh, you can say that if, they, if it's, a, it's a mono uh, unicompartmental arthritis of the medial side of the knee joint, you can go for a high tibial osteotomy of the knee joint, or you can go for a unicondylar uh, knee replacement. So these are your options. Don't be mind blocked that if you see an instability, anterior rotation instability, your answer will always be an ACL sort of reconstruction. Um, that uh, the, 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 uh, the duration of the injury is very important. If the patient is having a, an ACL injury for the past six or seven years, then you'll not be able to actually get away with a simple sort of an ACL reconstruction uh, into that. Treatment option, Dr. Kazim actually uh, elaboratively told you non-operative treatment options. They are mostly obsolete at the moment. Um, then uh, the, the for, for, for the reconstruction options, you need to know that uh, what type of bone you actually, actually uh, what, are, what type of graft you're using. If you're using a, a bone tendon bone sort of a graft, then your, your suspensory devices actually matter. For example, if you, you, you're using a titanium screw, then your method and modality of reconstruction will be different. Or if you're using a suspensory device, like an endo button, then the technique that Dr. Kazim has actually showed, told you 
that you need to go and you need to find your anatomical tunnels and in your inside your anatomical tunnels you need to go and find your resident ridge yeah that that, uh, that resident ridge this structure that resident ridge your acl actually be the lies behind that find an anatomical um, uh, entry into that and then you can actually go and make your tunnel the first drill of 4 mm will be for your endo button to pass and then the 8 mm will be for your tendon to actually pass the formula that actually dr kazim actually tell you how to measure it uh, try to remember the formula of 232 so 7 mm is the least amount of collagen that you will uh, want inside the tissue 2 2 will 2 inside the knee joint 3 intraarticularly and 2 again inside the tibial tendon this is the minimum amount of collagen that you will be uh, actually wanting inside your, uh, your your ACL to actually work into the fashion to actually stabilize your knee joint. Then uh, previously there used to be questions of actually putting your graft in which position, like uh, ten to uh, like ten to twelve o'clock and twelve to two o'clock in the the right and left knee. Subsequently, that concept is actually being uh, being uh, replaced. Uh, this concept was previously followed when you are using your your, um, your trans tibial sort of technique, but now if you are using a transportal sort of technique, you need to go and find your resident ridge, which is the most accepted and the most widely uh, uh, the, the most uh, result oriented sort of reconstruction that you will be uh, wanting. So uh, this was uh, this technique was uh, this was regarding something a uh, few things that you would like to, I was li would like to. Uh, uh, to tell you about these things and now regarding uh, one lecture in meniscus that Dr. Kazim actually took uh, one of the most important thing whenever you see a patient of a knee joint uh, or a knee pain in your long and short case ask very precise question what is the problem whether it's pain if it's only pain your mind should be thinking of one sort of pathology and uh, the second question is whether it's instability whenever you see whenever you, you hear the word instability then the next thing that other than the knee joint that you should examine is you should go and ex examine your patient overall and make take a, a very brief and quick beaten score of your patient. That whether this patient has got an instability in the other side of knee as well or what is the beaten score of the patient in order for you to actually plan and see that what type of reconstruction that you'll be planning. For meniscal sort of injury, if, you, if the patient is, uh, has told you that he has got pain, then obviously you're, you will be thinking or more on the borderlines of a meniscal tear versus an osteochondral defect versus loose bodies inside your knee joint. And if the patient says that it has got a, a, a history of instability, then your mind starts to work on different bigger ligamentous structures, associated ligaments that you start thinking that it might be an ACL. It might be an ACL, um, uh, I mean, uh, along with a PLC, posterior lateral corner, or it can be a combined sort of injury. Uh, so these are the brief points that you should actually pick up and they, they will actually help you and actually understand and to see and you, they will actually guide you throughout your examination that what type of pathology that you are trying to pick up. Remember, in short case, you have got only seven minutes. It's nearly impossible to actually pick up all these findings in seven minutes. So you need to, to um, uh, use these tips and tricks to actually help you out and what type of uh, the pathology the patient has and you need to be very, very uh, uh, pinpointing towards whatever uh, pathology there is and in order to diagnose and actually have to investigate that. Dr. Kazim, you are uh, are you uh, refreshed up for the for going to the CL He's and looking uh, at the screen on the cricket score? I can see him turning towards his TV all the time. Like I say, can can so, I make a couple of comments? Yeah, so very good. I mean, I'm I'm enjoying this. I, 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 the, the few things you must remember, guys, that you cannot be a computer, you cannot be a book. So on the exam, you have to have your brain working to make a differential diagnosis. If the patient has got a meniscal tear problem which the examiner obviously knows because he's got it written on this piece of paper saying there's a meniscal problem. Now, if you have a meniscal problem and the patient is telling you pain and you want to examine everything, ACL, PCL, lateral column, that tells the examiner you have no clue what is wrong with the patient. You must cater your examination towards the pathology. The second thing is for an ACL to reconstruct or to reconstruct any ligament, you have to have a normal knee joint. If you haven't got a normal knee joint, there is no point in doing any of these fancy soft tissue procedure. In the same manner, you cannot do a hemi or, or a, a, a unique compartmental knee or a tibial osteotomy if you have no ACL. There are people who are now doing ACLs, uh, reconstruction and tibial osteotomies and uh, uh, unique compartmental knees at the same time. But for the exam purposes, keep it simple. You must go to the basics. 
If the joint is not arthritic, I will do a ligament reconstruction. If the joint is arthritic, then I will look at other options of managing this patient. Just make sure that your examination is very clear and very directed because at the end of the day, you are all doctors and surgeons. So if I have a cuff rotator deficiency patient, I will not go and examine him for anterior stability because that will give the examiner the wrong impression, totally give the wrong impression. So just make sure that your examination, although you have seven minutes, you can make a diagnosis. Even if you don't make a diagnosis, at least if you're logically taking steps and assessing it, you will still get the good score. Okay, so over to you, Kazim. So you, you've muted yourself, Kazim. You, sorry, your speaker is mute. Dr. Kazim, you did? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's muted the speaker. I'll see if I can help him. Yeah, Kazim. There you go. Okay, yeah. I, so yeah. you can hear. Okay, sorry, so I unmute myself. So guys, in, for the exam, in the short case, uh, trust me, most of the, the patients which came, which come, going to come to you, one, I, it should be one knee. Um, it has some very simple pathology. That is the meniscus and the most probably, why well, we're not going to always, most probably ACL because PCL is very hard to, first of all, to judge within three minutes and also PCL is most of the time combined with the uh, posterior later coronal instability also. So for you all, what I can advise you, please, as much as you can practice. It's not at the exam time that you're going to, to do it properly. Be gentle, be sympathetic, to show sympathy to your patient. It's not like just finding out the diagnosis and you are at the same time putting so much uh, stress and pain to the patient. That we're going to make you fail. So now, uh, again, come for the, uh, now we're going to start with the PCL. Five to, it's account for 5 to 10 percent of the knee ligament injury and uh, that's what uh, is very important. It has an antagonized action of uh, what the ACL has. Okay, sorry. So it has an antagonized function of the ACL is so S ACL, intermedial and posterolateral, is opposite goes with the uh, PCL. It's anterolateral and posteromedial. So those changes, in the intermedial goes to anterolateral and posterolateral goes to posteromedial. This is what the fiber did look like. If you see, this is a posteromedial fiber and this is a fiber of the anterolateral fiber. So these are the, also the PCL have the two fibers and that's injury of the mechanism of the injury. If struck by the hyperextension or by, by dashboard that goes uh, from the force goes from the anterior tibia plateau to the posterior uh, area. Very important for the PCL, how now there was a one uh, a candidate who has a very beautiful question. How are we going to sometimes we always go over there and in spite of uh, doing a PCL, we think it's an ACL. So because first of very important point, we are in a hurry. We don't see the neutralization of the knee joint. We go, we put our hand side and start the shaking in it and it's coming forward. So the first part for the knee joint is first you have to calm the patient and see the knee position. It is posteriorly sagged. If the knee is posteriorly sagged and you want to, when you're going to, going to push it forward, of course you're going to come in forward. And you say it's an ACL. So you have your, you have to keep your eyes open. You have to know your uh, patient knee position at the time of the flexion. Quadricep activation test. It's one of the most, uh, one of the important tools that I, what I find when I also, trust me many times, I also be confused. And it take, a, take me around 10 to 15 good minutes to make sure what I am looking. 
because when there's an ACL and PCL tear, things are very difficult to confirm that it is just a PCL, it is a PCL only, or it was an ACL, or it was a mixture of both. So what I do, I make sure, make the knee flexion at 90 degree, and I relax the patient and see the sag. If it is posteriorly sag, you put a pen test. We, uh, if, if you put a pen, if, if, like, if, if the knee joint, if I make my finger into the knee joint like that, so let me do it like that. So I put my knee over there, a pen, pen over here. If I see my pen is going very, is going vertically, is going down, there's a gap between my pen and the bone. So that's also give us a pen test, which give you an idea that there the, the PCL has gone. So it's hard, I totally agree, but you have to calm yourself. You should know from uh, your, again, what Dr. Sofiane had told you, your system, your algorithm should be very perfect. It's not always go inside a new and start just checking it forward and say, yeah, it's a PCL, it's, it's. And most of one one time, I know there was a patient with I saw a PCL, and all of the all of the candidate failed because they all knew and told them it's a PCL. So PCL, when you say, then you have to make sure the PLC complex is also big, uh, or it's also intact. So very important. We 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 hold our hand at the toe and make it uh, forward. And then, but then we sh we see is there is a recurvatum because of the posterior capsule has been torn. Posterior lateral cap uh, this uh, is also uh, is is also having a problem. So it is what is the extra rotation recurvatum test is meant for. Again, guys, we all should able to read MRI in the exam. There's a no excuse that we don't can't appreciate a PCL and ACL. Trust me, it's not a big deal. If you see in this, PCL start from the posterior of the femur and goes posterior to the tibia, and this is what the PCL look like. And if you see over here, the haziness increase in the intensity, the PCL is torn. That you have to, the MRI will be there. You could go say, okay, well, what do you want? I'm on an X-ray, okay, this is an X-ray. If you see, okay, there may be some sublux of the posterior segment of the tibia. Good. Now, what do you want? I want an MRI. Then MRI in the sagittal cuts that you have to go into condyle and notch cuts, and that you have to make sure that you see the PCL and ACL. ACL goes like that, and ACL going to start like that and goes and goes like this. So you need to appreciate an ACL and PCL on the MRI. Also the effusion, also the meniscus grade three going into the menisco synovial junction. That's most important that we all should know to read an MRI. There's no excuse. But that's not your 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 work will not going to finish until unless you can able to appreciate the, any tear in or a rupture on the MRI also. So this is uh, one of the uh, I uh, three that I found it very much uh, useful. And I try to uh, focus uh, in 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 the in my patient also because PCL there is a lot of controversy. A PCL to repair always or leave it. Uh, one school of thought says it it uh, it need to be repaired. One school of thought says it can be left alone with a physiotherapy. It can has a it can provide a good function. So that's what the, this all the algorithms say. Avulsion fracture, you need to open reduction and internal flexion. That is being required. Isolated PCL less than 10 mm displacement, rehabilitation. That we're going to have uh, another uh, this uh, classification that will going to further elaborate the same thing. Isolated PCL more than 10 millimeter displacement is where most of the time we need to have a reconstruction. PCL, PLC, ACL or MCL grade three, acute repair or reconstruction has been advised. So non-operative, nearly all able to return to sport in short term. Dijor said in 1988, laxity doesn't correlate with symptom, good result, 86% of the patient. Again, the non-operative for those patients 
which have this, uh, again, this problem of uh, less than 10 ml. So non-operative symptoms, return to pre-injury site in 47%, pain on activity 90, functional limitation 65, problem walking 43, swelling 45. So non-operative has its own pros and cons. So what happened if, if patient having more than 10 mm of uh, displacement, if you put in a non-operative, patellar femoral changes 62%, tibial femoral changes 69%, or severe OA at 2 to 4 is 71%. So TCL, that's one very much important, it's been having a role in the patellar femoral arthritis. So it has a increase in pressure on the patellar femoral joint. So there's a more patellar femoral arthritis with the patient with the PCL injury. So if you see uh, this pressure the, with the cut of PCL, the patellar femoral pressure increased 25-50%. That's why there's a more uh, prone of patellar femoral arthritis. So this is another very important uh, for the chronic PCL tears. Uh, that's what, what we always uh, have this mind. Uh, if it is a chronic PCL with the knee in the virus, first of all, you have to to high tibial osteotomy, correct it, correct it, uh, this and mechanical access. When the mechanical access is corrected because of this PCL there, of there has more uh, stress and strain on the medial compartment and causes the arthritis of the medial compartment. So on the both, it causes the virus of the knee and also the medial compartment arthritis. You have to correct the, uh, do a well-defined osteotomy. And that will also uh, to, uh, and and also what you do when you do a uh, high tibial osteotomy, the posterior of the approximate TB of the high tibial osteotomy, we make it more uh, superlized so that the posterior sagging of the femur on the tibia can be prevented. High tibial osteotomy by in, by changing the angle of the tibia can address our PCL deficient knee in chronic PCL tears. So if there is a more than 10 mm rehabilitation and reconstruction, it's what is been advised. Avulsion injuries, acutely you have to fix it. Again, uh, if you want to reconstruct the PCL, uh, how you want to, uh, how you can reconstruct it, there's always a gracilar hamstring that how uh, we are trained to do there are a lot of people do allograph uh, tibial center uh, allograph some a uh, lot uh, now there's a trend of ipsilateral peroneus longus uh, you can uh, it has a good tender uh, length of 15 uh, 15 centimeters so you can uh, take that also and, uh, and then the the remnant can be fixed with the peroneus brevis so this is one of the uh, important uh, way of taking the graft and for more than 40 years last ligament that's also synthetic ligament that's not available in part of world so of all in in pcl the first of all what we have to do you have to make a tbl tunnel and the tbl tunnel that's very important uh, we uh, we always uh, what we do is not a point that what how should be done but we should know how it should be. If you see the PCL, it's anatomy here, come around around uh, two to three centimeter posterior to the uh, of the posterior tibia. So, or you can say it's 30 degree uh, from the from the tibia slope. So it's not coming from here. It is coming from the around two centimeter posterior to the tibial posterior tibia slope. That your short your guide wire should come out. It's very, very, uh, but or rather it's not a simple surgery. It's need, uh, you can uh, say that it's a very high uh, steep curve for learning and you have to be very sure uh, where your bead pin is because if you miss it and if you start drilling and just go out, it's going to pierce your artery, optical artery. So that's what has a complication of 15 to 20% of all the PCL. Uh, reconstruction. So first we always uh, make a, a PCL tunnel, uh, a TBL tunnel. Uh, after that, that's where it should, uh, the site of the TBL tunnel is. It goes around uh, 
two centimeter posteriorly. That's how it's going to come out. So then, then we're going to rim through and through. Depend eight mm of the uh, graphic we we put, and it should be kept. And that's what what is uh, they uh, we go through and through. And this uh, this how you prepare your tibial tunnel. And then again come the femoral tunnel. Femoral tunnel it's on the anterior media is it's on the medial side of the femoral and the uh, uh, your AL and PM bundles it goes like that and that's where you have to make a tunnel over over on the femur over here so you make a femoral tunnel it's same that make a femoral tunnel for the ACL it's same that you make a femoral tunnel for the PCL again first guide wire goes through is transportal the guide wire go to 4 mm for the endo button you want to like if come and then because the side it's a 40 mm of the if the femoral tunnel is 40 mm you want to have your 20 mm of your uh, graph inside the femur so that's how you're going to rim it till 8 mm to 20 mm uh, 8 mm rimmer till 20 mm and the rest you're going to keep it like that and then you have to pass your graph from the tibia and this uh, is known as a killer tongue that's where uh, that's where make your life uh, very hard when you want to pass your uh, this uh, graph from here so that well, that's where they are. you have to be very careful for passing that now once you have passed that again the endo button if i'm using what i use i use a uh, the we use we use a hamstring tendon so it's always uh, endo button uh, on the femoral side bioobservable screw on the tibial side so again this uh, how it looked like there's a different way of people doing uh, how it looked like on the posteriorly and um, that's uh, uh, for the that would be being required uh, is being uh, done so again, for rehabilitation, it has its very uh, other rehabilitation. Most of this thing uh, we uh, we been done by our physiotherapist. It is a stage wise that we've been done. That's very important. Jack brace that has been recommended for the PCL because it's not available in our part, but still we should know what the jack brace do. It causes pushes the tibia. Uh, force the tibia anteriorly. So you want to have the minimum pressure or the sagging of the of your tibia to go posteriorly so your graph can be uh, be on the normal position and fibrosis and the actinization can happen uh, with the with the help uh, that is being required for the PCL. And this uh, what is the check brace important it is and it has been shown it has a very important and if it if the patient with the acute PCL if uh, jack brace is being uh, kept over there there is a good functional outcome with the with a good healing potential so this by this uh, this end with our uh, PCL so if uh, Dr. Sufyan want to add something or you want to uh, talk about it so we can then go further for the for the PLC. So, uh, Dr. Can you uh, un unshare your screen? So I can yeah, I have, uh, I'll just uh, stop sharing. Okay, I have stopped sharing. You there, Sofia? Yes, yes, I am there. Okay. 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 Fine. So, uh, as we actually are moving from uh, ACL to PCL, then the question actually um, uh, arises that what uh, uh, happens in a multi uh, ligamentous uh, injury sort of situation? Uh, well, theoretically, you have actually know that uh, the multi ligamentous uh, knee injuries uh, occur because of uh, knee dislocation. Knee dislocation actually is, uh, happens anteriorly, posteriorly, and it has got a rotatory sort of a, a mechanism with it. So, multi knee are basically complex and challenging sort of a uh, scenario in which you actually come across uh, more than one sort of ligament which are actually being injured into that. So 
well, traditionally, you know, out of the classification system, you should actually uh, memorize this, uh, this uh, uh, Schenck classification system uh, and the uh, classification system by Kennedy. Uh, you have uh, almost gone through the, the, all this in your in your exam uh, for your theoretical point, point of view. In acute cases, you need to look out for vessel front of injury if the pulp and uh, be very, very precise in uh, examining uh, your uh, situation of vessel sort of injury. Well, in exam scenario, usually when patients come to you, he has actually passed through all those, uh, the era of uh, having a ligamentous, uh, uh, of uh, having a vessel insult and he must have gone through uh, the area of either a repair or conservative management for the uh, area for the problem of uh, a knee dislocation or for the vascularity. The other thing that you should actually start examining whenever you feel that you are actually in a multi-ligamentous knee uh, structure injury that you need to look for the nerve. You need to look for the foot that what type of injury is there in the foot whether the patient has got a foot drop or if the patient has got a foot drop obviously uh, going towards the option of management and going simply towards the knee decumentous reconstruction will not be able to help you uh, in that scenario so you need to actually um, have uh, another when you actually get done with your examination point of view that dr kazim has actually men mentioned that when how to actually uh, diagnose a pcl sort of an injury rather than differentiate from an acl First of all, another, a very important test is the pen test that he actually mentioned that it is in such scenarios that is very helpful for you to actually identify. Uh, and uh, in other scenarios, the patient needs to be very, very, very much relaxed so that you are able to find the neutrality of the knee joint. If you are able to find the neutrality, then you will be able to find it. Well, um, it's just like the AC, PC, uh, the posterior drawer has actually got a grading. Posterior drawer. 1 plus posterior drawer 2 plus and posterior drawer draw plus 3. Most posterior drawer plus 3, so it's very easy for you to actually pick it up that what, what you're actually trying to find. If you follow all these steps of examination, that relaxing your patient, going towards the neutrality, then pushing the knee backward, you'll be able to pick up the finding that it's a PCL injury. And if it's the neutrality, it is not coming until it's an isolated sort of a PCL injury. If it is Anteriorly as well from the neutrality, then most likely it is an ACL along with the combined with the PCL injury. Once you actually found uh, the PCL injury, and uh, the investigations that you should actually come into your mind is that whether, if or depending upon the duration, you need to go for plain X rays and the stress X rays, uh, either squatting view or the varus and the valgus stress view, to look for your collateral. And the, the, the scanogram, it should be followed that whether it is because of the knee ligamentous, multi-ligamentous knee structure scenario, it has actually led uh, into a varus sort of a situation, a valgus sort of a situation, or it has gone into posterior side. Just looking at the PCL injury and going and saying that it's going to be a PCL reconstruction will actually not actually favor if your patient has got a varus sort of a knee because of chronic instability of your collaterals. And if you do a PC reconstruction into that, that actually will going to fail. So your, your reconstructing options will be either to change the posterior slope and either raising the posterior slope and if you are, if you are, if you find anything different in your scanograms. So not going simply into a, 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 a PCL reconstruction will actually answer your situation. So in examination scenario, what actually helps you in identifying you should go to the make the patient squat, examine the spine, examine the hip, and then you make the patient supine, and then you start having examining all the the, 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 the examination that are actually uh, yeah. If you're using hamstrings, then all inside hamstring technique, reconstruction technique, Dr. Kazim very elaboratedly uh, told you that this technique is an all inside PCL reconstruction technique. You can also, you should also be knowing your other way, methods of uh, PCL reconstruction technique. From theoretical point of view, whenever you are telling an examiner that you can, you'll, you can actually uh, uh, take a PTB and go from the posterior backside of the knee, make the patient and you sort of a 
You should know each and every step of the reconstruction. If you're going for an all inside PCL reconstruction, you should know each and every step of the reconstruction that Dr. Kazim has actually elaborated that how you're going to perform a posterior knee arthroscopy. Posterior knee arthroscopy is a, is, is a technique in which you should go into the posterior PCL and the posterior lateral corners. And uh, these techniques should be known. And you should be able to identify and you should be able to tell that which uh, that how to make posterior medial and the posterior lateral muscles whenever you are actually going from moving from an additional anterior posterior ligament reconstruction all inside to an all inside PCL sort of reconstruction. So all these things should be mentioned and it should be known uh, into a very precise sort of a manner in order for you to completely uh, complete the scenario of a reconstruction going further into the discussion sort of. So Dr. you be going to uh, some collaterals uh, in, your, in your next talk. Are there any collateral uh, lectures? Uh, no, I was going to cover the PLC uh, part of this uh, talk. Fine. Fine. So, so, so back to you, Dr. Kazim. I'll stop my share so you can start your third. So we'll be uh, covering up with uh, the PLC corner and something about the MCL before we actually uh, completely complete our knee. Just guys, remember for the exam, you know, remember one technique and remember it very well. You, you, you're not supposed to know each and every technique. Pick one and remember it and then be able to talk on it. Okay. Just a very quick question for all the trainees who are listening. Yeah. While Kazim is getting ready. So if you missed a posterior, lateral, posterior corner injury or posterior lateral corner injury and, and the patient is now come to see you in, in say 12 weeks time and he has got a... Uh, 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 you know, a normal looking joint. What are you going to do with PCL? Are you going to still reconstruct it? Very nice pain. <clears throat> so if you are in use, which is called a varus thrust. <coughs> if you have a varus thrust and you missed your PCL injury, what are you going to do now? Nobody wants to say. Okay. You might need to do a tibial osteotomy to, to correct that. You might not need to or want to do a soft tissue injury. But anyway, we let get Kazim tell you, or oh, sorry, Sufyan tell you more about the posterior lateral corner bit here. Shall I start? Yes, yes. I understand okay. that whenever you see an injury inside your knee joint, decide the time, whether it's an acute sort of injury or a chronic sort of injury. If it's a chronic sort of injury, then your, your reconstruction options will be totally different. So, Dr. Kazim, uh, I think you're ready. We're starting yeah. with the complex. Yeah. So, for the posterior lateral contract complex, uh, that's where a lot of uh, like uh, there's a uh, question arrive and there's a must, uh, what I would rather say, okay, a lot of people have a confusion what this posterior lateral mean, what is all about, what does posterior lateral, what is a lateral, what does this both have to do with each other. So first of all, the anatomy, that's very important. We should all know what the posterior and lateral component has a uh, important structure. So these are the, all the structure that is present on the posterior lateral complex. So very important, long and short uh, bicep, iliotibial band, popliteal tendon, popliteal fibular ligament, lateral collateral ligament, popliteal tibial, popliteal meniscus, arcuate ligament, fibulo, uh, Fibulo, fibula ligament, and lateral capsule. So these are the important component of the posterior lateral part. So what are we all looking for? Long and short bicep tendon, iliotibial band, post popliteal tendon, and lateral collateral uh, this ligament. That's what we always try uh, to look into and also the lateral cap. So when we have, uh, when we see PLC, PLC comprise of the most important components are the long and short uh, bicep tendon, iliotibial band, popliteus tendon, lateral collateral ligament, and the lateral capsule. So these, this is the important PLC complex. So PLC complex comprises of this structure. So if you say PLC complex is not fine, uh, if you say dial test is positive, so it's mean these structure is have uh, some injury to it. So most of the time PCL goes with the PLC. So both have 
the conco concomitant uh, uh, problems at the same time. So you, when if you have a doubt for the PCL, you should not miss the PLC complex also. So what the PLC function is restrained, uh, PLC restrained to posterior tibial translation and various st stress, the PLC is the primary stabilizer, external tibial rotation at all knee flexion angle. Majority of injury are distally based disruption of tissue from fibula and proximal uh, lateral tibia. So these are the structures. So I all want you all to have a focus point. So what the, what these are? If you see fibular collateral ligament or lateral collateral ligament, and this is the popliteus, and this on the cadaver how it look like PLC popliteus popliteal fibular ligament. It also goes and adherent on the popliteus tendon. So now the recommendation is wherever for the PLC, you have to restore the uh, fibular collateral ligament and popliteus tendon and the popliteal fibular ligament. So this, if you, there's not only one uh, uh, fibular collateral that is being required to uh, restore. These all two other ligament, uh, one tendon, popliteus tendon, which has been torn, and also the popliteal fibular ligament that need to be restored in the PLC complex. So how we clinically evaluate, most, most commonly due to hyperextension, virus injury, often from direct flow to the from blow to intermedial tibia, generally at least motorvicular fall, pain in PLC or pain in PLC of knee, buckling, buckling in hyperextension, Hi, hyperextension extra rotation uh, that we, you always do. And also in the dial test, you're going to have uh, more extra rotation of the tibia as compared to the normal knee. You have to compare the both of the knee. That's the key of the, uh, your uh, differentiation that you're able to do. Both of the knee need to be examined simultaneously. So dial test that we all extra rotate the knee, the extra rotation will be more. Postulator extra rotation test that what uh, we have uh, showed you. Posterior door test, extra rotation recurvatum test, the knee is more when you're going to uh, hold the knee, the mid knee is more uh, in the recovery tab and it looks more externally rotated as compared to the both of the knee. So this where when you hold the big toe and bring it off, the knee will be in hyper recovery tab and the tibia will be externally rotated. And also the virus tests are tested for the, uh, for the fibular collateral ligament that has been required. Then evaluate gait for virus stress or virus alignment, lack of uh, contained effusion, strongly prediction of uh, complete postural injury, evaluation for palpable bicep uh, femoral tear, LCL in figure of four. We put a patient in figure of four and we palpate the bicep. Combined ACL PLC coronary injury has increased anterior postural <coughs> virus and rotation as compared to the normal knee. That's what, I bought, what we have uh, uh, told you. It causes more external rotation. It causes more recur weight up because of the posterior curve capsule is being uh, torn. And of course, very important PLC. You always need to have a peroneal uh, nerve palsy. Uh, you have to evaluate it. Classification. There are multiple classifications that we're going to go through it. Uh, more, uh, it all depends upon the injury grade, chronicity, a presence of associated injury. There is a Houston classification, very important uh, for treatment guidance. A different classes of system describe rotation stability were created by Finale et al. So these are the different classification. And uh, this Houston classification, many of us uh, uh, used to follow. But the virus press on, on X-ray that give you a, a good idea, okay, is it can be managed conservatively or it has been required for the uh, this uh, uh, surgical intervention is being required. It is less than 2.7 mm normal knee or minus pain. It is a requirement, so it can be managed conservatively. 2 to 7 to 2.7 mm to 4 mm complete a a FCL. So you still you can uh, go with uh, uh, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, conservative management with the help of uh, 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 this brace. More than 4 mm where complete postulator injury is, that's where you have to keep in mind that maybe your uh, this uh, surgery required. This Houston scale for FCL injury, that's very important. 
zero to five, conservative five to ten is still again the border, the pain, the the other associated injury will going to give you the uh, dictate you. And grade three more than ten mm is of course that where the classification is going to dictate that you require a surgical option. So then again there is a hard sign and the soft sign. That's an, uh, again that's where with the experiment base that will going to give you an idea. Okay, how much is of only the LCL or there's a LCL and postural letter corner instability. So when you do a virus test, if it is hardly opening, so it means the only the only LCL has been torn, so still you can have um, one option that you put them in the brace and see how much it work within two months. If it is softly opening more than 10 mm, so it means or the P, uh, PLC, PCL is uh, PLC, uh, um, other complexes also being involved. So what to do, indications. Non-surgical for PLC is not well documented in the literature. That's all what I have we always, that's why the confusion is not for the resident, is all for, for, for us uh, as a sports surgeon, still we have a lot of debate, we have a lot of uh, school of thoughts on that. Uh, of uh, on multi ligament still are uh, nothing uh, is being confirmed okay, what is should be a plan of action the same with the plc so grade 1 and grade 2 i have told you can be managed non operatively with early mobilization good outcome grade more than 3 we going mobilize and full full action followed by appropriate range of motion and shortening exercises the brace should be held for 3 months because of the good five to cause a good fibrosis Great to direct repair within two weeks, the sooner the easier. There we are, uh, it is being also advocated. Uh, you can repair it still again. Uh, it has its own uh, controversy uh, about its uh, repairable function. Chronic, more than three week reconstruction with the help of uh, HLS, uh, this allograph or uh, this thing. So, Chronic uh, PLC, Dr. Sufyan has told you very much important. You should need to have a mechanical and also uh, uh, mechanical access to make sure the you have to maybe you have to do a, a high, high TBL osteotomy. If it is PCL and PLC injury acute, you need a repair and reconstruction. If it is ACL and PCL, you need an acute ACL and PCL uh, uh, reconstruction. So these are the algorithm. If whenever you dealing with the multi ligament injury, that's where uh, that's where uh, important uh, aspect that you have to keep in mind the uh, pattern of uh, how it goes for the reconstruction in the single stage. First, it's PCL you have to tight reconstruction and the tightening of the PCL. Then you have to uh, tight the PLC. Last go with the ACL. So the sequence of tightening or sequence of finalizing your ligament in the multi-ligament one stage uh, surgery is one first PCL, then PLC, I mean LCL, or I mean if you do the uh, laparad uh, uh, surgical, then it goes with the PLC, third come with the ACL. So this is the sequence of the event that you have to follow when the when you're doing a uh, multi-ligament injury so this uh, sequence I have, I have told you that's very important you all should uh, uh, keep in mind so that what the treatment plan will be examination under anesthesia always always in any case tell the patient if you have ambiguity tell your examiner that you will going to want to examine under anesthesia first when you're going to examine under anesthesia, you will be 110% clear if what it is a PLC, PCL, ACL, whereas valgus, if you could give a good idea. Knee arthroscopy, always remember any ligament injury, you have to make sure you do a knee arthroscopy and you a knee arthroscopy can give you an associated any meniscal injury. The PCL can be examined arthroscopically by entry draw test and give you an idea okay, how much uh, this uh, TBL is translating. Posterior draw can be see arthroscopically how much posterior is drawing. 
if the if your medial uh, medial side is opening can give you an idea about the mcl if the lateral side is uh, opening that give you an idea about the plc and uh, again what you reconstruct any crucial ligament injury first and fix at the femoral side so what are always we do we we'll do an arthroscopy we make a femoral tibial tunnel and femoral tunnel both for the acl and pcl under uh, the tourniquet in two hours in the first stage leave the tibial tunnel screw fixation final screw fixation then we go to the plc right then we uh, make a tunnel of the uh, for the fibula and the femur in the plc uh, <coughs> and leave it over there now we tighten and fix the pcl Uh, tendon into the tibial tunnel then we go to the plc and last for the acl so this is a sequence of uh, the fixation of the uh, this ligament on the tibia that we do so what what we other we need to do, do evaluate iliotibial tract bicep femoral nerve lcl popliteus popliteal fibular ligament repair injury structure by direct suture suturing through a drill hole or suture like that is a different way of acuity you can repair it and reconstruct plc and fix before fixing the tibia of acl we have discussed about it pcl is also being done fix pcl then plc then tension acl on the tibial uh, side so there is a different way of doing uh, this uh, plc corner reconstruction now the, this is how we been uh, done it's a elaborate at uh, technique we don't need to go more detail about it in which you reconstruct uh, the popliteus uh, tendon you reconstruct uh, the popliteo fibular uh, fibular ligament you construct the fibular collateral ligament so this how it is been done in the elaborate tech uh, this making a fibular tunnel it's goes back over here and that's it go up into the lcl is been done so these are the elaborate uh, technique uh, we uh, for the multi ligament we do modify the larsen technique but it is recommended your popliteal tendon your lcl and popliteal fibular ligament three of them need to be reconstructed for the posterior lateral corner stabilization so these are the different uh, way how we do it uh, that what how we put a uh, this guide wire we make a two tunnel inside it and this how that inserted for the lcl and for the fibula and uh, that what we uh, be uh, you have to put a, into the femoral you have to make a two tunnels you have to remove uh, uh, the suture inside it and through which the graft is going to go and you go to fix with the biotinin this is screws and that's how it with the fibula and how with the femur it is going to look like and this is the nerve which is going through so you have to take care of your nerve and you have to hold it uh this uh, uh nerve uh first you have to identify the nerve and bring it aside after that this lapra technique uh, can be done so this is the last uh, this is the how it look like at the end of the day so post operative care again uh, it's a sequence of the uh, phase of the event that is in uh, required for it and uh, this uh, multi ligament this is a one of a case that we did it so we will going to further uh, discuss about the post uh, the plc corner the dr sufyan has to say uh, anything so he can uh, uh, share his thought and he can uh, further uh, tell us about it. Thank you. Uh, put one slide. Uh, PLC. Just, uh, Dr. Kazim actually mentioned to you the procedures that you can actually go through uh, for your PLC reconstruction. One was uh, the classic Lepra technique that you used to actually reconstruct your plc that he was mentioned one slide i think i missed one slide but the other method that you can actually mention is the modified larsen loop technique which is much easier 
and then uh, mentioning your all of uh, this leopard i think i missed that slide uh larson modified larson loop is basically a technique in which you actually uh take one tunnel on from the from the tibial side and uh, what you do is actually uh, after making a tunnel you actually go across uh, take a, a, a single semi tendinosus or or a, uh, it's better to take a gracilis graft because the gracilis graft is much thinner and uh, easy uh, easier to use than uh, your semi tendinosus graft uh, then you make a tunnel your upper part of the fibula you just loop your 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 uh, your, uh, your graft around and you bring it back to the st same starting point on your femoral side and you just fix it onto your femur with a, a, a suture anchor or with a biotin of dc screw whatever you you're actually comfortable with so this technique is much easier than this complete uh, bio uh, the, the, this uh, uh, extensive uh, um, procedure of uh, of leopard procedure so you can also mention the other technique you should remember two names whenever you are actually asked that what are what will be your surgical techniques you should start with uh, the modified larson loop technique which is much easier the way i have actually told you one single graft you loop it around your fibular head after making a drill and you just tie it back on your femur and if the examiner asks you that what is another technique which is more anatomical uh, so the answer should be leprard technique so leprard technique dr kazim has shown you every each and every step of this technique uh, that you actually need to uh, follow uh, for this sort of reconstructions so another point that uh, has that uh, actually many people ask in the examination point of view that dr kazim has actually also mentioned that first of all you need to do your pcl then acl uh, you put your P ACL tunnels, tighten the PLC first, then do your ACL, and then subsequently you need to go uh, through uh, your your reconstruction, go into the extra articular sort of reconstruction. Now this type of pattern should be followed whenever you are actually doing your reconstruction in one single simple setting. Whenever you can also stage your procedure when you are talking about a stage procedure. So if there is a choice between doing an ACL or a PCL first and doing ex collaterals lateral, the, your answer should be you should always go for, uh, even if you're for stage procedure, PCL first. In a multi-ligamentous setting, PCL first. Remember one thing, in isolated PCL injuries, if you see isolated PCL injury, the indication is very low for plus one or plus two posterior drawer. Only plus three posterior drawer and a combined PLC ligament reconstruction needs a, a PCL reconstruction. But whenever you're talking about a multi-ligament setting, PCL combined with an ACL or a PLC, or a, is a PCL along with ACL or an MCL, always you need to reconstruct PCL force because it forms the center of rotation for your knee joint and your knee, your knee kinematics cannot be balanced until unless you, you put your PCL perfectly right. And again, uh, going uh, anatomically, that uh, has been mentioned that uh, as like ACL, you can also uh, uh, perform a double bundle PCL reconstruction. So, uh, but uh, if, you, if you put your, your, your single bundle ACL correct in an anatomical fashion, uh, theoretically and uh, and uh, uh, I mean clinically it works really well as like a double bundle sort of technique. So uh, Dr. Kazim, do you got anything for, for MCL that you will be mentioning or should we just uh, 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 wind it up? You got some slides for MCL? I think your mic is closed Dr. Kazim. So for the MCL, it has a very good uh, outcome uh, with the help of uh, uh, conservative management. It because it's an extra articular uh, ligament. Again, if you uh, if the MCL again come patient coming with the acute injury, just uh, putting in the brace for uh, putting in uh, for non weight bearing for around two to three weeks, then. Uh, partial weight bearing for two weeks with, with the sequence range of motion started after the three weeks uh, with the full range of motion at uh, eight weeks we can attain it. Full weight bearing can start it at the six weeks. It has a very uh, good uh, uh, this functional outcome uh, with the help of uh, uh, this conservative management. Again, when we uh, when we have to again we go with the soft sign and the hard sign that I have just mentioned it before. Or if, if it is a soft sign, 
that means the M scale is totally thought and is more than 10 mm on the valgus stress test. In that, that's very much important that you have to uh, keep in mind uh, that then the M scale has a two insertion. One is posterior oblique ligament that is more superior and go more posterior. And one is uh, one goes with the uh, superficial uh, medial uh, ligament that is more inferior. So you have to bring your MCL will going to start from the anatomical landmark, always anatomy. You have to restore the anatomy. It's go posterior to the medial epicondyle. You, uh, this where the, uh, uh, if, you, if you see over here, Dr. Sufyan has uh, shown this. This is how it going to look like. This, uh, if you see, posterior to the medial epicondyle, this goes into for the, for the superficial medial collateral ligament, and another goes with the posterior oblique ligament. These two is being required if you want to uh, restore the medial collateral ligament in the knee joint. So that's where uh, for if the MCL is torn, it is the soft sign is present and it is more than 10 mm uh, opening uh, on the valgus stress test. So, Sufyan, you want to add on? Yes, uh, an interesting thing. Well, one interesting thing, whenever you see an ACL uh, injury combined with an MCL injury, but MCL has got a good blood supply. Whenever you actually uh, see, uh, open up the medial side of the knee, you actually see the blood vessels running onto the uh, very, uh, I mean, um, extensively inside the structures of the medial because of the insertion of the pes and serenus and because of the tendons going towards the uh, of the, the the hamstring tendons which are actually uh, uh, forms the uh, backbone of uh, uh, of uh, sports medicine knee reconstruction soft tissue reconstruction um, the lord has actually blessed the medial side of the knee with an extensive extensive uh, blood supply so because of that the, the healing is very uh, uh, good and effective over there. So whenever in a multi-ligament sort of uh, setting, you see an MCL injury along with an ACL injury, it's always, always you can wait. It's, there is no rush in going towards an ACL sort of reconstruction in week one or week two. MCL has got very good healing sort of power. Uh, you can actually wait for six weeks, six or seven weeks for the MCL to actually uh, get into your 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 uh, normal sort of uh, 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 of uh, fibrosis uh, over there, and with actually you can see that after six to uh, for seven to eight after seven to eight weeks, you see significant um, uh, strength of the MCL returning back. Whenever you are planning to do for a reconstruction, always go for anatomical reconstruction of uh, the MCL, as you know that the superficial MCL has got uh, a very it is a large structure. It spans the knee joint from the medial side. So whenever you are actually trying to, to, to catch all the birds with one stone, you actually have to go and uh, reconstruct. Your one tendon fiber will be uh, uh, covering the superficial of your your rear second tendon, which is a little bit posteriorly and behind two millimeter, two to three millimeter behind uh, your medial epicondyle. Your posterior oblique ligament should be reconstructed in order for you to, for your knee to actually uh, go through a normal kinematics into uh, your, to your rotational sort of uh, stability that you actually come across. So you need to know your multi-ligament is setting, whatever, what, what are you trying, what are you looking for? If you're, when you're trying to look for an MCL, an ACL with an MCL, the pattern is different. When you see an ACL, PCL sort of injury, the management is different. When you see ACL, PCL, PLC, the management of tightening is different and ever and in a very very rare scenario that actually we come across we have come across in, in our clinical practice as well when you see all four ligaments gone then your construction options, options are, are are totally uh, different in that sort of scenario so in order for uh, for you to uh, appear in your exam in a multi ligament sort of settings you need to give very very safe answers you should not be uh, jumping towards that you will be doing a total uh, all four multi ligamentous knee structures in one setting because those uh, uh, they, that is uh, almost very difficult and almost impossible to do about um, because of harvesting sort of maneuver so you need to stay very safe you need to you need to say that whatever type of reconstruction is required 
you if you in an ACL PCL sort of setting, you need to put your PCL correctly first, then your ACL, then your extra articular ligament structures, medial side, blood, good blood supply, lateral side, many complex structures, nerves go through that. You need to look at status and so far so good. Uh, so you need to mention all these steps whenever you're actually going through all these procedures. I think, Dr. Kazim, we have almost covered everything, every um, uh, single aspect of uh, soft tissue, ligamentous uh, knee structures present. Is there anything that you, you would like to add? or Kazim, happy because Karachi won, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, who, also happy because Karachi won. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, one just yeah, with one run. They won by one run. I'm just, I was, re I was watching the match at the same time. <laughs> I could see it every time. Anyway, just to make 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 a summary of it. What if you are not as talented as Sufyan and Kazim, and you're somebody like me, and somebody comes with a dislocated knee? Is anybody going to tell me how you're going to manage that? Okay, so very important. That's one of the main important things. Yeah, so I'm I'm not a, a soft tissue knee surgeon. I don't know anything about knees. And I'm on call, and this patient comes in with a dislocated knee. What am I going to do? You know, you know, you can unmute your mics now. You can talk, all of you. So nobody wants to say anything. Everybody's gone to sleep. <laughs> okay. So, 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 yeah. Okay then. I don't know what your name is, but it says lab tech, whatever that means. Do you, do you want to say something? Yes, sir. In case of uh, knee dislocation, first of all, we have to reduce it in emergency. Yeah. After that, we have to check, to check uh, is the neurovascular status. Good. And look after our compartment syndrome. Okay. So you will also assess. Uh, uh, you, you can you can stabilize them. And I, I I have recently got a patient like that. I think I showed it to to Sufyan Kazim, and I then spoke to Amir Krashi, who's our guru on knees that we also learned from. So he he told me to reduce it and stabilize it with our x rays which we did. And then we got a vascular assessment done, which had a small interval tear. But then what we did was he told me to put the patient in a posterior cruciate brace, and which we did. At eight weeks, when he was reassessed again, the only thing it needed was a ACL reconstruction. He had a medial collateral ligament. He didn't have a piece, posterior lateral corner, but he had a PCL and he had a uh, uh, ACL and he had a medial collateral ligament injury. But we put him on a brace and we ended up uh, sending him to our vascular surgeon, sorry, a soft tissue knee surgeon who put an ACL reconstruction for him. So the key here is you must know how to do damage control. You, if you see this patient in the exam, I would tell the examiner that I would stabilize the patient. I would make sure there was no vascular assess. And then I would see if I could get my soft tissue knee surgeon to come and have a look at it. Please don't start talking about multi-ligament reconstruction to the examiner straight away. If you are asked, you're cornered. You have to reply. But don't start your discussion with after assessing the patient. I do an MRI scan and I'll do a multi-ligament injury reconstruction. You, you, you can't be expected to do everything in exam. Unless somebody specifically asks for you, don't go and volunteer that you will do this because that shows you're an unsafe surgeon. As far as I know, you have to say this in exams in England. I'm not sure what it's in Pakistan, but you have to tell them that you're not a specialist. You will manage them in damage control and then you'll ask the specialist to come and have a look at it. However, most examiners, even in England, will tell you you're the specialist. The patient has come to you now tell us. But that small statement, if you don't make, you get into trouble. Okay, so, so before before we close today, I think we should thank uh, Sufyan and Kazim for doing an exceptional good job. Uh, the, the point is that next week on Saturday, we're going to do arthroplasty, uh, infection and revision of joints. Uh, one of our colleagues here, uh, Mr. Moore, is going to take you through it. And I, 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 I was told that maybe Shahid Nurbai will also join in from, from Karachi. Then on Sunday, Arif Saab is going to do uh, uh, backs and, and TB backs and tumors of the back and and trauma of the back that he's going to have a chat with you. Okay, so so that leaves us with Friday. Friday, we'll start viva practice. We will do a bit of viva practice. Okay, the only sad bit is the last weekend before the exam, I have to go to teach on the RSREX course. So I will be not available, but uh, I am sorry for that. But hopefully by that stage, you would have covered most of it. So is that okay with everybody? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, and thank you, sir. Okay. That was an exceptional job, yeah? All his honors, sir. Thank you, Colonel. Thanks a lot. Yeah, go on then. Yes, sir. You're saying that thank you, uh, all of you. It was an amazing lecture, and we learned a lot. A lot of things are clear now.
about the knee. So thanks, Sufyan Bhai, and thanks, Adam Bhai. Most welcome. Okay. You must all understand that Zoom is amazing. We, we are doing lectures. We're sitting in the comfort of our home and watching cricket. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. I'll see if I can videotape this and send it out to you guys. And thank you very much for joining me. Eh? My pleasure. Love. 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 Love.